Hello everyone. So we will continue that topic abstract class. Now what we will do from this abstract class, we will create the subclasses from this abstract class. So how to create? From this abstract class, I will create two subclasses. In the first subclass, I will write a logic to display the sales order details. In the another class, I will write a logic to display the billing document details. And then after that, I will come on to the important property of object oriented concept. So firstly, I will create a subclass by using this abstract class. I am writing ZSUB. Suppose this is my first subclass. Sales display underscore. I will use my serial number. I am creating a first subclass. I'll go for create class. I will write the description to display the sales order details. Your subclass can be final, not an issue. I will save it as a local object. Now, all of you know, whenever we want to create a subclass from a parent class, in this case, our parent is this abstract class, how and where we can give the name. We have to give to go to properties tab, super class, and we will pass the name. Now, from that abstract class, I'm creating my first subclass. I will go to methods and I am activating this particular method. I am getting a error and this is the most important point to understand the concept of abstract class. All of you should get this message whenever you are performing the practical. It is saying this method display, this method display is in our abstract class. From the abstract class, we are creating a subclass. Now, if you remember, this method display is a abstract method in the abstract class. It means I cannot write a logic in the abstract class method display. But now, we are creating a subclass from the abstract class. It means I want to write the logic in this particular method. In your abstract class, the method is abstract. But in the subclass, if you want to write the logic in this method, you have to convert it to non-abstract. It means in the subclass, we need to redefine the method. And why we are redefining the method? So that we can write a logic in this particular method. Simple understanding. Your method is an abstract method in the abstract class. But whenever you are creating subclasses, you want to write the logic in that method, in the subclasses. And if you want to write the logic, you have to convert it to non-abstract method. So how we can redefine this method? I'll simply put the cursor 
and there is a redefine button and you can see when i clicked on to redefine button now i can write a code in this method and you can always write a code in the non abstract method here i will write a logic to fetch data from vbak table that is my sales order table select single er dat er z e t er num vp type from vpak into i will pass the four variables p e r dat p e r z e t p e r num p v p type now i will pass the where condition i'll just give some space where VBELN is equal to PVP. I'll check the syntax and I will activate this particular class. And you can see from the first, from the abstract class, we created our first subclass. Now we will create another subclass also so that we can understand the real importance of creating the abstract class now i will create another abstract class and now i will give the name billing i will go for create class in this class, we will display the billing details. It can be final, no problem. I'll save it as a local object. I'm activating my second subclass. Same, I will go to properties tab. In the super class, I will pass the name of my abstract class. Now I will go to methods tab and whenever I will activate and you can see the same to same error is coming in the second subclass also because in the second subclass also we will write the logic in this particular method. So if I want to write the logic, I have to convert it to non abstract method. How I can convert? by redefining the method so i will redefine the method now i can write the logic but here i will fetch the data from billing table and all of you know vbrk is your billing table same to same columns are available in this table also if we will go I'll just go er dat er z e t er num and vb type. I will fetch the data. Select single. Firstly, I will fetch vb type. Then I will go for er num. E R Z E T E R dat. Now I'm fetching data from another table V B R K into I will pass the variables P V B type P E R num P E R Z E T P E R dat. Where? I will pass the where condition where VBELN is equal to PVBELN. Do not confuse that while uh, PVB type that 
here i am fetching vp type first and in the first class i fetched vp type at the last because this is one of the best coding practices which i followed in vbak table my vb type is at the last if you see in my vbak table my vb type is after er dat er zdt and er num but here my in vb rk table my vb type is at the first and after that we have the other columns so i simply followed the best practices best coding practices so what we did in this particular video we created two sub classes from my abstract class in the first sub class i wrote the logic to fetch data from vp ak table in the second class i wrote the logic to fetch data from vbrk table it means in the first sub class we fetch the data from we fetch the data of sales order in the second class we fetch the data for billing details for billing header now how we wrote the logic we simply redefined the method why we redefined the method because we have to convert it to non abstract method rest part will continue in the next video thank you